Hello humanoids, welcome to Halfling Hobbies. I'm Halfling Hannah and I have started running Curse of Strahd. After years of home brewing, I decided, hey, why not try one of these pre-written adventures? And of course I had to go with the OG Curse of Strahd. So I have been absolutely loving it and thought it would be very useful to do a whole series of videos on prepping for Curse of Strahd. Our very first one was about the things you need to know before you run Curse of Strahd or even by the adventure, to be honest. Uh, so you can check that, check that out. There's a link down below, but I'm going to be making several of these and I'll put them in a playlist. So if you are running Curse of Strahd as a DM, I got you covered. So that's what we're gonna talk about. Also, quick announcement. As you probably know by now, we hit a thousand subscribers and we're going to have a party, but a virtual one. So I need you to take the poll to let me know when to have that party because you have to be live present at the time in order to win the spectacular prizes that I have in mind. So please make sure you head over to the community post that we now have because we hit a thousand subscribers and you tell me what day works best for you. So this video is specifically going to be about the secrets of Valaki. This is not a full deep dive into Valaki. This is just to refresh your memory on all of the secrets that Valaki holds because Valaki is essentially the gothic days of our lives. It is full of secrets, full of drama for your players to discover, and it might be nice to have a little refresher before you get into it. So this is going to be just a quick overview of the secrets of Valaki. Warning, lots and lots of spoilers. If you are a player, do not watch this video. This video is not for you. Leave. Are you gone? You're gone, right? Okay, here we go. All right, so the easiest way to do this is just kind of by area. So here is a map of Valaki, and we're going to go over the different areas and the NPCs that can be found in those areas and the secrets that they hold, because pretty much every important NPC in Valaki has a deep dark secret. So let's of course start with the Burgermeister. Uh, the Burgermeister, Varen Vargas Valak Valakovich. Hard to say. Baron Vargas Velikovich is an interesting man. He believes that if he can make everyone be happy, not make everyone happy, but make everyone be happy, that somehow Valaki can be um, released from this curse of being under Strahd. So he literally just stages festival after festival to try and force the people to be happy. Spoiler alert, does not work. People don't really buy into it or like it, but if they disagree with him, they get locked in his closet. It. <laughs> that sounds weird. But currently, the Baron does have one individual, a citizen, who is a malcontent locked in his closet, and he's trying to reacclimate him and make him apparently be happy all the time by locking him in a closet. I don't know. Super weird. His wife is up next. That's Lydia. Lydia is not very interesting, to be perfectly honest. She's a yes man to her husband. She completely agrees with what he's doing. And the most interesting thing about her is her secret, which she doesn't even know. And that is that in her, uh, where do you get dressed? Dressing room. <laughs> In her dressing room, there is a mirror that if you speak magic words, then three ethereal assassins come out of the mirror and you can control them. However, Lydia does not know that this is a thing. The most interesting secret in the Valkovich family uh, mansion is their son, Victor, who is a great disappointment to them. Victor has locked himself in the attic with a book, a spell book, and he's trying to learn the teleport rotation spell in it. However, he's not doing a very good job. He's self-taught and there are some problems. Any of your wizards or spellcasters can look at the teleportation circle and immediately note that something is terribly wrong with it. If anyone tries to use this teleportation circle, they're going to be ripped apart. And Victor has already tried out his teleportation circle on two family servants. Yeah, 
Yikes. He is not at all remorseful about this. He only cares about perfecting the circle and trying to get out of Barovia. Little does he know that it will not work even if he does manage to perfect it because it only teleports you to the same plane of existence and Barovia is its own plane of existence. Sad day for him. Next up, we have Isaac or Isaac. Not really sure which one you want to use. I say Isaac. Isaac Strodzny. He is like the bodyguard for the Baron. So when he was a child, he and his family were attacked by wolves. Supposedly, the rest of his family was killed. He's missing an arm. And the Baron took him in and raised him as his own. One day, he woke up with a devil arm. Don't know how that happened, but it did, and it can cast Produce Flame at will. Everyone is terrified of Isaac, as they should be. He is a soulless, that is important to note, and his secret is that he is actually the brother of Irina, who, you know, this whole thing kind of centers around. Yep, she was also in that wolf attack. She ran away and was adopted by the Burgermeister of the village of Barovia. Now, the really creepy thing about Isaac is that he's been having dreams about his sister grown up, and he's been going to Blinksley, which we'll see in a minute, to create dolls of her. And his room is just covered. Walls, bed, everything is covered in these dolls of Irina. And if the players happen to bring Irina to Valaki, Isaac will take her and lock her away in his room and refuse to give her back. So that is the Burgermeister's mansion. Let's move on to the church. The church here in Valaki is known as a safe haven and people feel like they are safe from cur from Strahd here. However, the priest has a secret. Recently, the bones of St. Andrew, who, like, those are the things that have made this consecrated ground, making this church safe, well, those bones have been stolen. And he's not sure who did it, but he suspects that it was the grave digger. Millie is what I call him because I don't know how to say his name. And he's right to suspect him. He did do it because the Undertaker told him to. See how this is all weird and weavy? Anyway, so that's the church. So let's skip to the Undertaker because the reason why he paid Millie to steal the bones is because he's actually working with Strahd. Now, he didn't know it was Strahd at the time, but he definitely does now. And he's in too deep to get out. He stole the bones of St. Andrews so that Strahd could orchestrate an attack on the church to discourage and upset all the people of Valaki because he's a jerk. We're gonna call it that. And right now there are vampire spawn being housed in the underkeeper, underkeeper? No, sorry. In the coffin makers, uh, coffin making place. <laughs> So don't go upstairs there or there's gonna be fun things. All right. Moving on to the Blue Water Inn. There's a couple of interesting things here. The first is the half-elf bard who is here. I love, first of all, that he doesn't sing. He tells stories, which I think is super cool. And his name is Rictavio. However, his real name is Rudolf Van Richten. That's right. The famous, the legendary vampire hunter. And one of the people that your party may or may not be looking for based on their fortune telling. So he is there. He has an additional secret. He, one, is trying to discover the Were Ravens and the Order of the Feather. Two, he wants to destroy the Vestini because his tragic backstory. And then three, in his wagon, he has a saber toothed tiger that he has been training to unleash on the Vestini. Whew, lots of secrets there. But wait! There's more, because also in Blue Water, the owners of the Blue Water Inn, we have Erwin and Danica. They are were ravens, and they are high members in this secret society of the Keepers of the Feather. This is an order of were ravens who are directly opposed to Strahd and work against him. And all the ravens flitting around in the attic, if your players get up there, those are all actually other were ravens that guard the inn and protect it. And so if your players get in good with uh, Erwin and Danica, then um, if they ever get into trouble, then you can actually have 1d4 were ravens say, show up to help them, which is a super cool thing. So that is the Blue Water Inn. Next, we're going to hop over to Binksley. 
So Binksley Toys is creepy. <laughs> so creepy. Um, but the dude here also believes what the um, Baron is selling, which is that everyone needs to be happy. So his part in that is to make toys, except he makes the weirdest and creepiest toys imaginable that no child would really find nice and fun, except for like a sociopath or something. I don't know. But he makes them. Um, he, his secret is one, he is making dolls for Isaac, which Isaac has told him to keep on the down low. So he's not telling anyone. And two, he knows of the whereabouts of a very special toy um, from his uh, idol that is housed in Castle Ravenloft. So he may give up that information. Other than that, Binksley is just just a bad toy maker trying to make people happy. <laughs> Next up, we have Watcher House. This is the home of Fiona Watcher and her two troublemaker sons and insane daughter. So Fiona Watcher is kind of like the one who, well, not kind of like, she is the one who is vying for power in Valaki. She hates the Baron and wants to take him out and become Baroness. She is aligned with Strahd and is actively trying to um, turn Valaki into a stronghold for Strahd. She is doing this by creating a cult. So she has told members of Valaki that she has made a deal with a devil and that this devil is going to give them powers to help them kind of take over. However, this is a lie. She has not actually made a deal with the devil. She is just using this cult for her own devices. If your characters go downstairs to the basement in Watcher House, then they will discover the cult there who will attack them. Fiona will probably invite your adventurers over for dinner um, just to kind of feel them out. If they don't like the Baron either, then she's likely to offer them an alliance. However, if they say anything about wanting to kill Strahd, she will immediately count them as enemies and take them out of the house. Her secret, aside from the whole cult thing, is that she has a crazy daughter. So one of her schemes was to get closer to the Valakovich family by marrying off her daughter to their son, Victor. Victor, remember, was learning a little bit of magic. Well, he used uh, like kind of like a cutting word spell to make the daughter insane. And now she thinks that she's a cat and not a nice cat. She's a very mean, creepy cat. And she is upstairs locked in her bedroom. So there you have it. Those are all of the secrets in Valaki. If your players run across across these NPCs, you need to be aware that they have secrets. And boy, oh boy, are some of them really terrible. So what is your favorite secret in Valaki? And have you added any? One of the great things about being a DM for these um, awesome adventures is that the adventure is already written and we can add in all of the fun stuff that we want to. So what is the best thing that you've added in Valaki? Well, I hope you stick around for the rest of this series. And as always, I hope that this gave your game advantage. Until next time, my friends, may your game have advantage. Halfling Hannah here, signing out.